Hello everyone, welcome back to Nib Picking. Happy New Year 2021. Um, interesting fact about New Year's is it's actually my birthday. So I am 36 years old today. Happy uh, for my life and grateful for the things that I get to do. And I did decide to treat myself a little bit uh, when it came to how I was gonna celebrate my birthday this year. And I bought a pen, which is the most expensive pen that I have ever bought before. And it comes in this box right here. This is the Platinum 3776. I had a lot of options for what I would choose uh, for my first gold nibbed fountain pen. Um, and I settled on the Platinum because of my very positive experience with the Platinum Preppy and the Platinum Plaisir that I had a few years back and unfortunately I lost. Um, but I really like their nibs, even at the low price point. So a little bit higher up, maybe I thought I'd enjoy it as well. Um, and there's lots of nib options with the 3776 as well, um, from ultra extra fine all the way up to, I think, uh, broad or coarse are, are kind of the higher end, the thicker line widths. I like to play down in the fine line widths. So I ended up going with a soft fine. Uh, because I feel like the ability to be a little bit flexible with my line weights in a pen would be a huge game changer. I also feel like that would add to the smoothness of the nib. So we're going to check it out today. Um, join me on this journey. Okay, check out what came in the mail today. I was so excited about this. I just had to open it up and check it out right now. This is the box um, that the pen comes in. You can see the label. It says... Platinum Fountain Pen, uh, 3776 Century, Soft Fine, Black in Black. Should we get it to focus here? Um, there we go. And it's a platinum box. I'm going to open this up and we're going to check out what's inside. Okay, so uh, this is a nice box. It's got a nice little um, section right here, this little cardboard sleeve, get a little bit of protection there. This is something I could see having around to keep the pen in. It feels solid. It's probably a paper or pulp based, like a cardboard box, but it still feels really nice. Uh, it says Platinum Japan 1919, and when you open it up, oh, it's got a nice satisfying creak. Oh, very nice. It's already set in uh, with a little band to hold it in. Nice little plush um, cushion. And on the inside also says Platinum Japan 1919. Uh, our pen is protected by some plastic. Let's get that open. I like this tape. Sometimes the tape is really hard to tear off, but this is like a you know, like a like a masking tape, and it seems like it would be really easy to get the pen out of there. It comes with a cartridge. Um, this pen did not come with a converter. I did order a converter, but it hasn't come yet, and so I'm going to be using this cartridge because I just can't wait. Um, so here we go. All right, seems to have some sort of a little, um, like a barcode or something on the clip here. So let's take that off there. Okay. Ooh, it feels very nice in the hand. It is very light. It does feel like it's some kind of a plastic, but uh, look at that. Wow, the clip is nice and shiny. Um, pretty stiff but I kind of like a stiff clip. Got a nice rounded finial on the top. Um, and on the bottom, it's kind of got like a matched pair. Uh, it says across this golden band, it says platinum made in Japan, 3776 century. Okay, there's a little platinum logo there. Great, I'm gonna untwist it. Wow, 
Okay, this is the soft find, 14 karat gold. It says 3776 across the top. And there's that nib. Uh, these nibs kind of famously have a, a kind of a flat shovel-like appearance and a little heart-shaped breather hole. It's very nice to finally have one of these in the family. So um, if I open it up here, this is metal casing that goes around where the uh, cartridge or the converter would go in. And I, I do like Platinum's ink, so I don't feel bad about using a converter, or excuse me, a cartridge while I wait for my converter. I'll bet you it will be all used up by that time. Um, the Platinum cartridges have a little metal ball bearing in them, so it does take a little bit of, there we go, a little bit of effort to get that in. Okay. I am very excited to give this pen a whirl. Feels like just about the right length where I could use it unposted if I wanted to. And then let's try posting it, see how that feels. Okay, of the two, I prefer it posted. I think that little extra weight on the end makes the pen feel a little more significant. Otherwise, uh, feels quite light. So if you like a lighter pen, maybe unposted. If you like something with a little bit of heft to it, just a tiny bit, still not very heavy, but posted feels nice. All right, let's give this buddy a whirl. Okay, so pen in hand, we are going to do a few test lines. Um, I should note that one of the things that I did actually before we got started is that I um, flushed the pen out with water, just kind of cleaned it out and got some uh, liquid running through it in order to get the um, the cartridge to work, something that I forgot that you have to do often with um, cartridge pens because I usually just use the converter. Um, so that should be that should be noted. Uh, let's take a look at how this pen performs. I never know what to do in these parts. I know people who do um, writing samples will often do the quick brown fox. I didn't feel like that was appropriate for this. So I'm just doing some hatch marks. So I usually do that. I really love how thin with light pressure these lines can come out. This is probably the thinnest stream of lines that I have gotten. This is Tomoe River paper, by the way. When I do my drawing in a little bit, I'm going to be using that paper. So I thought I would test on this paper. I am a little bit nervous because uh, that pa this paper is pretty slick and okay it didn't do too bad there a little bit of a smear there but if I were to do some hatches and immediately brush my hand over it like a left-hander that I am uh, you would get that right there this smudging which I'm really hoping doesn't happen here but I can get very intricate details which I think is cool um, let's take a look at this is uh, light pressure almost no pressure. You can see as I bring a little more pressure into the game here, you're getting steadily thicker lines. And this is about as much pressure as I'd want to put right about there. You can see that even bent the paper and it, it's thicker. It's not so thick that if I were like, for example, if I were using this pen for calligraphy, I would probably be disappointed with that amount of flex. But for an artist, it's about the perfect amount of flex because you really don't want to have too huge of a difference between your thinnest line and your thickest line, but you want to have enough difference. You want to be able to create um, like line weight to separate out parts of the drawing and then have uh, maybe secondary details drawn uh, smaller. Like so, for example, if I were to draw a block, I'll just draw this here. I can do the outside with nice and thick lines. And then the inside would be thinner. And that way I can get kind of some dimensionality to it. And if I don't want a huge difference uh, in the shadow part, I can do really thin 
hatching type lines. And there we go. Um, yeah, so th this is the level that I would want for this pen. So I'm pretty happy with how this came out. Um, what I can do with it, let's, uh, let's draw something. Okay, so I've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, in this video, I am drawing my New Year's resolution, which is something I've never done before, but it was really fun. It turned out really great um, in the end. So I wanna talk about my individual resolutions. They are a big deal to me. I make um, probably 10 or so of them a year and I only achieve three or four, which is kind of what I expect. So I make lots of different resolutions so that I have a greater chance of success with some. Um, before I get into the individual resolutions, which are coming up in a little bit, as I do this title, let me talk about the Platinum 3776. Um, using it on this Tomoe River paper, I found that it was uh, pretty wet and pretty um, smooth. I did have issues with resting my hand on the parts that I'd already inked, and when the paper got warm, uh, some of the ink came off, which I think I'm going to blame on the paper. Um, however, this nib writes like a dream and it actually exposes some flaws in my drawing style. I'll get into that a little bit more with each one um, as I go into uh, the details of the individual drawings that I did. So this took a lot of planning to get it just right. Did a lot of research even, um, you know, this isn't a perfect version, but I did this uh, this watch to represent the passage of time and I did a little bit of research on what actual pocket watches with gears and things look like. If you're super into watches you might notice a few mistakes but um, hopefully the illusion holds up uh, and this pen definitely held up to my expectations. I wouldn't say you need an expensive pen like this in order to be uh, good at art or in order to do really great um, uh, fountain pen art but I do have to say, I feel like this pen is a huge level up for me in my art game. I'll be using it a lot for art pieces in the future. Um, it's really fun to work with and uh, it's very smooth and very, um, it's a very nice pen. I'm very impressed with it. All right, so my first New Year's resolution is to use the time I'm given, not the time that I have. Uh, I will have to unpack and explain this a little bit and I'll explain the drawing that I do. Uh, this has to do with a work-life balance. Um, I have found in the past and definitely uh, in this past year with COVID, uh, I give a lot to my work and um, I feel like my work continues to take from me and it's, it's, a, it's a give and take. I do choose to put extra effort into my work. I work as a teacher. And those of you who are in that profession probably know that it's a never ending uh, battle between time, work and home balance. Probably people who are working uh, as their own boss who um, are independent contractors like that, you see probably the same issues where you have to choose one or the other. So in this drawing, there's several different holes that I'm taking from. Um, my family, my friends, my own personal rest and um, work like that. Uh, and it's, I can't keep taking from them. It's gonna make me fall off that cliff. You can see the cracks already start to form. And work is just this gigantic hole that never seems to be filled. So I do need to find a proper work balance. I need to use the time that I'm given in the day to do my work and be able to put it down at the end of the day. So that's using the time that I have and not the time that I'm given. I'm sorry, giving that's the opposite. Um, right, and then this next one is make it worth the calories. I'm a huge fan of the British Bake Off, so it's kind of a, a, uh, a tribute to Prue Leith, one of the judges there, who always says, you, what you make has to be worth the calories. So in this case, I'm, I'm applying that to art, and there's a person that's taking a big chunk off of a giant piece of cake that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but what it means to me as an artist is I invest a lot of time in my artwork um, and it needs to come to some kind of a value. So what I'm planning on doing this year is hopefully uh, I'll be opening up 
um, a shop. I'll be uh, investing in other things that I do that make money. I do have a few places where I have been making money this year, so I wanna invest more in those things. And then I wanna build a brand for myself, a website, those sort of things, um, and have some way for my artwork to actually um, make me money so that it's worth the calories, basically that it's, um, I'm getting back something for all that I've invested. So that's that one. This next one, and this is where I'm a little bit embarrassed about the wording because it doesn't it doesn't uh, look that great compared to the sketch I did of this. Uh, but it's it's discipline and consistency. Ironically, um, there's a person running on a treadmill and he's drawing at the same time. Um, this is partially to one of the goals that I have every year that I actually had some success in this year, staying healthy. Um, I lost some weight, and uh, if you go all the way back to my first video on this channel, you could see I was a little bit rounder. Um, but that came from discipline and consistency. I want to apply that to my artwork, to be working hard um, and putting in daily effort to improve, uh, and also in other aspects of my life, like my health. So uh, discipline and consistency, those are the only ways to success. There's no magic pill. Um, you should stop looking for it and just get to work. That's what I want to make sure I focus on this year. Okay, we're getting, we're moving on into the next of my resolutions for this year. And this one is pay back your investors. Uh, what you can see here is there's a boy giving a basket full of hearts to a girl. Um, and in his memory, it shows that the girl gave a heart to him way back a long time ago. And this is related to uh, being a supportive husband to my wife. Um, also, my friends and family have supported me, but she's really been there for all the stuff that I've done. And she puts a like on every one of my videos. And I just want to do uh, great things so that I can uh, pay back her, but also... Um, I would like to remember and remind myself that uh, the way that she'd like to be paid back is by spending time with me. So I need to make time in my schedule for friends, for family, for the people who believed in me, um, in addition to wanting to be successful so that uh, they could be proved right about me. At the same time, I really wanted to be um, spending more time with them. Okay, and then uh, this one's an interesting one, and I'll try not to get into too much of an overshare here, but uh, you have this uh, monster, and the, the, um, the resolution is expose your monsters. And um, I think that relates to just kind of stuff that we have in our lives where we think um, that we're suffering all alone, things that we... Um, feel like, oh, if I told someone about this, they wouldn't care, or um, everyone goes through this. Uh, so I've learned that I suffer from a bit of anxiety and occasional depression, and it took me a while to realize that the rest of the world does not necessarily have the same problems that I do. It's not normal to feel uh, depressed or to... Um, to be anxious in, in social situations and not want to interact with people. So I'm having to learn to expose that monster, to talk about it a little more. This is a start of that. And I'm you can see this sort of night, he's fighting it off with his pen. So I'm going to write and I'm going to draw about that. I'm going to try and be transparent about my own kind of personal struggles. Um, yeah. And then the very last of my resolutions that I'm going to be sharing with you all is, is a very simple one. Um, it just says, create more, post less. Uh, the idea is there's this flower, it's being watered and it's growing roots. And if you've ever seen the roots of a flower, they're humongous, they dig deep. Um, and when you, you, know, you ask someone to be true to their roots, you're asking them to focus on their foundations. And so for me this year, I'd really like to be uh, more foundational in my approach to drawing spending some time improving my techniques, um, investing in uh, working on classes, reading through books, uh, practicing, drilling, improving my technique, as opposed to just creating things uh, to be posted 
to get attention on so social media, um, stuff that's not really improving my craft as an artist, which is what I'd really like to do this year. So it's not even necessarily that I'm going to be posting less often. This YouTube channel I post about every two weeks. That's my schedule, which isn't very often. And I'm also on Instagram um, and I post there about, oh, probably less than once a week, to be honest. I should post more, but what I'd really like to post uh, less of is post a smaller percentage of the actual drawing that I do, like 10% of what I draw would go up on social media as opposed to now, which is more like 50%, but that just means drawing more. So uh, here we go. This is the end of the drawing. Um, I took a little time to go over some of the lines again, improve my line weights and my values and stuff, but I didn't think that would be very interesting to watch, so I didn't film that part. Um, that's kind of the secret here. These videos are for entertainment. They're not really uh, a full explanation of what I do and how I do it. But I'm glad that I got to do this for you and thank you all for checking out this video. I think that went well, don't you? Um, this drawing took me a very long time to complete. Uh, I definitely noticed the ways that this pen was capable of doing more than other pens that I've had. I'm actually gonna make this page available as a coloring page for those of you who are interested. The link will be in the description to the video. Um, and I'm gonna try to make it available as an inking page as well if I can figure out how to do that digitally. Um, I'd love to hear from you. What are your New Year's resolutions? What are you trying to do this year that's different from the last couple of years? Uh, for myself, I really want to commit to these things right here, and I hope that they uh, lead me to be a better artist and a better person in the new year. So um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for checking out my videos. I've really enjoyed building this channel up this year um, and hearing from all of you. So um, happy new year, uh, be safe, and um, I hope that this year, 2021, brings a lot of great things for all of you out there today. Take care.